The really cool thing is you can traverse the Americas from Canada, the U.S., down through Central and South America in just a few square blocks. In fact, there's Venezuela. For some, trekking across Nepal is a sort of rite of passage. Very short trek across the Expo grounds, you'll find the Nepal Pavilion. And as you can see, it's a really popular spot for a photo op. In 1889, France hosted the World Expo in Paris. Only then they called it Exposition Universelle. One of the structures built specifically for the 1889 Expo became the symbol of Paris, the Eiffel Tower. More than 120 years later, France has just completed another World Expo structure, this time in Shanghai. The French pavilion is over 64,000 square feet. It's wrapped in a concrete mesh that's supposed to give it a floating appearance. The pavilion's theme is the sensual city. You can't tell from the outside, but here at the French pavilion, the theme is sensual city. Once you're inside, you're supposed to be able to experience the sights, the smells, the taste, the feel of France. So let's find out if the French pavilion really lives up to its reputation as a sensual city. Your first steps into the pavilion lead you onto a welcoming patio complete with a unique plant structure. When you live in a big high tower, you open the window. Most of the time you can't open the window. Right. But if you open the window, you have no birds, no nature. So with a vertical garden, it actually has two benefits. First, you take, you take advantage of the height, and when, even if you're high, you still have a garden. And second, on a 6,000 meter square surface of a building, you have more than 2,000 meter square of green. As you enter the pavilion's interior, the sensual experience begins. It turns out that by sensual, at least in this case, the French mean they want to appeal to your senses. Five senses to be exact, taste, sound, smell, touch, and sight. The idea is to make visitors experience a French city through all five senses. The first sense, taste, as evoked through French cuisine. Visitors can see chefs preparing French dishes with French ingredients. By seeing it, you can almost taste it, but not quite. One of the stops on the sensual tour is smell. But how do you let people experience the smells of a French city? So their smells are in these cones? Yeah, it's an odorama. Odorama. So it's different smells of the city. And what's uh, in this you one? go inside. And then you have a... Uh, go inside. Just go inside? You have a cartoon. Oh. Uh, this, this one is the, is the morning smell. You know, you have the sugar, the coffee, the jam, the croissant. I like that. But you have also pollution ones, tobacco ones. You have the smell of the lawn after water, after the, the rain. All those kind of typical smells from French cities. As for your sense of hearing, the French pavilion entices you to hear the sounds of a city through 10 French films from the 1940s through today. There this is she Brigitte is. Bardot. <laughs> and then as you move, you can also perceive the sounds. This is a more contemporary one. This is Gérard Depardieu in the 1970s. Oh, yes. You can't reach out and touch Paris, but the French pavilion appeals to your sense of touch by offering textures of French cities, pieces of road, sidewalk, and buildings. You can travel just by blindly, by touching a little bit, and then you know a little bit where you are, you know? Because every city, they also have their own texture, their own skin. The fifth sense the French are trying to appeal to is your eyesight, and the sights on display here are making eyes pop. Judging from reactions, the real showstoppers of this pavilion are seven priceless masterpieces of French art. The art is on loan from France's Orsay Museum, and this is the first time it's been displayed in China. These are originals, they're not Yes, they're a complete replicas. original. This is a complete original Rodin. Uh, the insurance value of the whole is one billion euro. Visitors here can see a sculpture by Auguste Rodin, The Age of Bronze. Jean-Francois Millet's The Angelus, Edouard Manet's The Balcony, Paul Cezanne's Woman with a Coffee Pot, Vincent van Gogh's The Dance Hall in Arles, Paul Gauguin's The Bananas, and Pierre Bonnard's The Toilet.
Visitors here can get closer to the art than they could in France, and they're even able to photograph it. Yeah, because we have a special glass, uh, bulletproof, everything, the, the, the paintings that are concerned with 22 degrees, mm -hmm. everything we take care of, and we have an anti-flash kind of uh, thing. So. On the way out, you can complete the experience with some French food or head to the gift shop and check out some French perfume created just for the World Expo. Beautiful. So you can recognize the, the shape of the building and it's made with magnolia. Magnolia, because that's a, a the flower. City, the flower of, uh, of Shanghai. I'm smelling pepper. pepper, I'm smelling magnolia. Uh -huh. Here, smell that. Oh, voila. So, did the French Pavilion live up to its reputation as sensual city? I'd have to say, oui, oui. You know, there are any number of different ways a country can choose to represent itself at these exhibits, but the really cool thing about the German version is that it hits you on so many different levels from the moment you walk in. At the German pavilion, those levels are contained in four structures that look like they're levitating. The pavilion exterior looks like it's metal, but it's actually made of a special mesh fabric. The German theme is Balance City. Yes, they actually invented a word for their theme. Back in 2009, while the German pavilion was still being built, I asked the German designers to explain the theme. It's uh, called Balance City. Balance yes. City. It's a combination of uh, balance and city, of course. Like it's the whole uh, pavilion is like a balancing act. And you can demonstrate that for me between the two of you, <laughs> can't can. you? Of course. Show we me can. how this works. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually the the volumes are like balancing like this. Like the okay, um, so even though they're slightly, he's a little larger. Is, you're yes. Yes. The idea is that each part for itself is not stable. So uh, the buildings uh, they um, stabilize them together in a corporate. Uh, image in a way and this is the idea what we want to transport also to China telling so we can change things together. The idea is the sustainable cities of the future need balance between industry and nature as well as work and play. The German pavilion is on the Padong side of the expo next to its real world neighbors France, Switzerland and Poland. Just before World Expo's official open the German pavilion's Marion Conradi was my guide through Balance City. This is the beginning. Yeah, this is how the, our visitors enter Balance City. It is our tunnel, uh, all about transportation. And uh, yeah, we just would like the visitors to forget what they experienced they before. Behind, and yeah. they should feel to get in Balance City and uh, getting closer to the, to the inner city. Then you're in the harbor. As you move up the escalator, it feels like you're floating up through a body of water, breaking the surface. This area is supposed to evoke a futuristic Hamburg, Germany's harbor city. The first stop, the planning office, where plans are being developed for the city of the future. Uh, like buildings, public buildings um, with uh, sustainable energy ideas. Then a walk into the garden area where these big red hats do something strange. This is the so-called garden. This is about private space. Private what are these? Uh, the hats are talking. You the should get under. <laughs> yes. One of the next major stops is the depot, which displays many of the products manufactured in Germany. So now we are in so-called depot. It's a kind of storage room. Uh, all the products you can see here are ready to be sent out from Germany to the rest of the Some world. Some of them look very familiar. Yeah, already existing, very, very nice for uh, everyday life. And they make a better city, but of course a better life. And uh, they are made in Germany or created in Germany. Those products have to be manufactured somewhere, which leads us to the next area, the factory. To balance out industry, a city needs parks. And this whimsical park is the next stop at Balance City. Stick your head into these viewing bells and you can get a 360 degree view of real German parks. After the park, it's the city square where people get together to eat, drink, protest, and have fun. That fun might even include a little opera karaoke
It's hard to top opera karaoke, but it's not over yet. The final stop is the climax of the German pavilion, the energy source. Here, visitors are confronted with a one-ton, three-meter diameter sphere which dangles before them like a pendulum. That sphere is covered with over 400,000 LEDs. So what's the big deal? Well, visitors eventually figure out that the sphere reacts to the noise they make. When the crowd works together, they can make that sphere do some amazing things. <laughs> is controlled by a sophisticated motor high above that reacts to the crowd's noises. The sphere was built in Stuttgart, Germany. The whole process took a year and a half. During the seven minute show, the energy sphere reacts to the audience and glows with images and colors related to the better city, better life theme. After you're done shouting, you may need to recharge your own energy sphere with some German food and drink. Uh, <laughs> sauerkraut and okay. sausage. Oh. Hi, my vice beer. Beautiful. Danke schön. Are you? Feeling dark. Cheers. 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 Feeling dark. Okay. Wow. Oh. Oh, great. Feeling dark. Thank you. Wow. Well, there's your sauerkraut right. and the. To uh, the expo. Yeah.